Hey everyone, it's Steve with Network Advisor. In this video, I'm going to be uh, reviewing a U-Hand tool, UH101. This tool was provided to me at no cost. However, I'm not being paid for this video, which means I can say whatever I wanna say. Anyway, so it's a multi-function uh, tool. It's got a few functions. The first one is it's a, it's a cable stripper or jacket stripper. It is a pair uh, unwinder combined with a straightener. I'll show you that in a minute. And then lastly, it's got this function of being able to help you. Uh, you know how when you have to make the little uh, RJ45 ends, it's got a function that's supposed to help get the pairs just right and in the right order and so forth. I, I, I'll tell you what, let, let me get to that and I'll tell you what I think about that. All right, so let's get started here. I'm gonna take a Cat uh, 6, yeah, this is a Cat 6 cable. Um, it doesn't have a spline in it, although it does have a flat divider. Um, but, so what you do is there's there's two size different holes here. Now, to, to be fair, one thing they did, they got a really nice set of instructions here and they have a video that's really good. So I'm not going to really be doing anything that that video probably doesn't already show you. I'm just more like giving you my opinion of the, uh, of the tool. All right, so let's take my cat, my cat six. And what you're supposed to do is like with any stripper, you know, there's a, there's a blade inside that you need to adjust the level of in relation to how deep you want to, to score the jacket. Now, for those of you not familiar with stripping uh, wire jackets, ultimately what you want to do is score the outside of the jacket, not cut all the way down into the inside. So the way that they suggest you do that is that you start with it kind of like, like where, where there was like a friction fit. So you kind of back it out until you get it just right to where it just, like where it almost just kind of pulls out. So you just kind of keep going. As you go counterclockwise, this little offset screw is kind of backing out. And what they suggest doing is just keep going until you can't, you could, where you could just barely pull it out. So let's see, oh, I'm going the wrong way, duh, sorry. Gotta go clockwise to make it looser. Okay, so look, okay, I can almost pull it out there. Okay, here it's starting to kind of drag a little bit. So that would be a good place to start. All right, so I'm gonna take and do a quick loop-de-loop -loop here. And if I did it right, yes, that's still a little too, a little too uh, deep because it, because, because what I want when it's done is for the jacket to be not completely cut through. I want it to just be kind of um, just scored. I'll show you. So let me see. Let me make it a little bit lighter. Okay, there. Let's try that. Let's try that. All right. Maybe I went around too many times. Okay, there. That's better. So now I've got it to where it's just, it's scored, but not, but it's a little bit through right there, but mostly just scored. Because the reason is you, what you don't want is for that blade to come through and cut the individual insulation on the copper pairs because and I can tell you from my own experience that in more than one case I've ended up in situations where I've had service calls to fix malfunctioning uh, RJ45 jacks because the wire had broke because the, whoever was doing the, the stripping at the time of the installation was cutting into the unbeknownst to them was cutting into the wire. All right, so now let's uh, let's check this next function, which is uh, the the untangler or the 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 dewinder. So there's this little spot right here. It's got these two little holes in it, and it says you're not even supposed to do anything to the end. That's what a lot of people try to like get it started, but you're not supposed to have to even do anything to the end. Uh, let's see, do you go on this end, uh, or do you go on this end? There's a, there's a deep end and a shallow end. I'm gonna go here on the shallow end. So once you get it started, yeah, that works pretty good. That works pretty good. Now what it's also supposed to do is straighten. So like if you were if you were working, like if you were gonna put on uh, a terminate a jack, you wouldn't need to do this as much. But if you're getting ready to make an RJ45, you would want to, uh, you know, one of these little um, plugins, you would want to straighten. So what, what you do is you clamp down like this with it still in there and then you pull back and voila, it straightens the bear. That actually worked pretty good. All right, let's try it on the orange pair because the orange pair is usually the tightest wound. So I'm gonna put it here on the shallow end. You see, there's a, there's a shallow end here. There's a deep end here. I guess you're supposed to put it on the shallow end. If I had read the instructions a little more closely, I would know the answer to that. Anyway, so you just kind of put it there and start to turn it. Yeah, okay. And then I guess as it, as it begins to untangle, you just kind of, kind of move the, the pairs through. This will be interesting because the orange pair is usually the, the most tangled. So let's see how well that straightens out. Okay, so I got it all the way to the bottom. Push down in here. Pull back. Not 
not bad, not bad. Not quite as straight as the blue pair, but considering how how un you know how tangled orange normally is. All right, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and finish these, <clears throat> and we'll do that last function. All right, so I've got all my pairs straightened. So let's pretend I was gonna do an RJ45 crimp on plug. So let's see, I gotta get my orange over here and get my green. So we go orange, white, orange, green, white, solid blue. I've got a video on this if you guys aren't familiar um, on how to make these, I'll leave you a link there. I'll put a little card in the video there to pop up for you. All right. And then the solid green, white, brown, and brown. Okay, now what I normally do <clears throat> at this point, from doing these you know, for years, is typically I just put my thumb on them like this, like that, hold it flat in, in the right pair order, and get it flat. And I usually just take my scissors and just cut straight across right where my finger is, at the edge of my finger, without cutting my finger off. And that's usually fine, that works fine for me. What this tool is supposed to do is measure it out perfectly for you and there's a little cutter in it. So let's give that a try. So it says you're supposed to get the pairs in order, flatten them out, and then what you're supposed to do is kind of cut off, oh, like a little more than you would normally need. So let's, let's give it like a whole inch, which is way more than we need, right? Then there's like a slot, this little slot here, kind of looks like almost like a, like a little, uh, SD uh, mini, uh, what do you call those little uh, memory card slots? Put that in there, holding, keeping your order, keeping all your pairs in order. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna tell you already that I, this would probably not be a feature I would be as, if I was new in the business, I might use this, but I think for me, this would not be the fastest way to do this. Okay, so you're supposed to push it all the way in until your jacket meets the edge, or I guess as close as you can get like that, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut like this. Uh, see, how do I know when they're cut? There's no clicking going. Oh, oh, okay. Wow, they all just launched like a bunch of bullets right at my chest. All right, cool. So then pull it back out, put your thumb in place. Keep, make sure, you're, make sure all your pairs are still in the correct um, pinout order. Get your little mod end, put it there, push it up through. Now, ideally what you want, and this is what the whole goal of this, this tool is, is to measure out <clears throat> how much jacket you still need to have inside the crimping part of the, of the modular plug. But you also need to make sure that on the inside, all your pairs are reaching the top of the jack. And I can tell you that they all are. So they, actually that worked pretty good. It was a little bit tricky for me to kind of get it going. I had only done it one other time before this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hmm, okay, that's cool. All right, and then you would take your little, your little tool <clears throat> and crimp it on and then off you go. All right, so <clears throat> um, can you do bigger cables? So I was using this smaller, this smaller hole for, um, for the uh, cat, uh, Six. This is just plain old Cat 6 without spline. This is an old Cat 5. Not Cat 5e, Cat 5. And it's pretty thin. I think you probably still could get away with using it, except that because there's a lot of play inside that, inside that cavity, I, I worry that the accuracy wouldn't be very good and you do run the risk of scoring the inside. Now, I personally am old school. This is just the way I do it, you know? I just take my scissors and I, there's usually a lot of scissors that have this little spot on the back just for this, this little indentation here. And I just do a quick little, just a quick little, like, I just, I, I graze it. It's just, you know, I've been doing this for years, but it's just a quick little grazing. And then what you want is for it to be perforated enough that you can just kind of break it. You just, all you're doing is just kind of snapping it, almost like you would snap like a dry green, a dry uh, uh, green bean. So that's how I do it. All right, now, I don't have any 6A cable with me, 6A. If you've ever worked with 6A, it's really fat, but a coax cable is about the same as a 6A, and what you would use is this bigger hole, like so, 
And then you, again, you would just do the same thing where you just adjust the, the, the depth of this little turn screw to get it right so where it's just kind of barely, barely penetrating the, let's see, so you want to go counterclockwise, you want to go clockwise to loosen, counterclockwise to tighten. So let's get a little, like there. Okay, I think, a little more. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, there we go. Give that a quick spinny. Let's see how that did. Uh, not quite enough. So I would have to tighten it up a little more. So I want to go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. I think if you were working with the same type of cable over and over on a job, like say you were doing, like, okay, that worked out pretty good. That worked out good. Now, coax does not behave the same way as um, as 6A uh, eight pair cable does. So it would be a little bit different. So bottom line is you could use it for either six or 6A or even coax, although people who work with coax a lot <clears throat> know that there's a different type of stripper they do for, for, uh, for, for coax work. All right, so just kind of recap, you got your jacket stripper and you've got your pair D, D twister and straightener, which actually works pretty good. And then there's the little uh, RJ45, you know, if you're going to be making an RJ45 plug cutter thing, which I could see you could get, you, you could get used to it. You could, you could probably, I still probably would just use the scissors because it's just faster for me. But if you're new in the business, this, this would probably, would probably be good for you. All right. Okay. Well, I hope that helped you out. Thanks for watching.